Hello, my name is David Teague, Technical Marketing Engineer at Nutanix. And in this video, we're going to use Nutanix Move to migrate onto Nutanix from ESX. This was something I did as a customer before I started at Nutanix in 2017 with Move, and Move has only continued to improve since that time. So let's take a look at how it works. We're going to start at the Nutanix Move dashboard. On the left, you can see the environments that we have already set up. If you need to set up an ESXi or Nutanix environment, click Add Environment in the upper left. You would then select your environment type. When you choose VMware ESXi, you must know the IP address or FQDN of vCenter or an ESXi host and have a username and password. You can also add your VMware Managed Cloud or VMC connection information here to migrate from VMC onto Nutanix. If you're setting up Nutanix AOS, you will need an IP address or FQDN to the Nutanix Prism interface and a username and password. You can use the Nutanix AOS environment type for making connections to Nutanix Prism Element, the local cluster manager, Prism Central, the multi-cluster management tool, or Nutanix Cloud Clusters, or NC2 for short, running in AWS or Azure. You can find more details about the user permissions needed in the Nutanix Move user guide on the Nutanix support portal. With our environment set up, we will create a migration plan by choosing New Migration Plan, giving the migration plan a name, and then clicking Proceed. On this screen, we will select VMware as a source environment and then choose our target, which will be one of the Nutanix Cloud Platform clusters. We're going to select a Nutanix Prism Central instance, as this will give us more options when migrating from ESX. We will then choose the storage container where we want the VM data to reside and then click Next. On the next screen, we will select the VMs we want to include in the migration plan. Once we're happy with our selection, we're going to click Next. On this screen, we will select the network VLAN we want the VM to use in our target environment. And one of my favorite features is, you can set up a test network to do test migrations. It is recommended that the test network be non-routable. With the selections made, click Next. On the VM preparation screen, we can choose the preparation mode for the source VM. If you select Manual, you're given a script that you would need to run on each VM that you are migrating in this plan, but we're going to use Automatic. Either one of these operations will install the Nutanix drivers on the source VM. If we take the defaults, Move will retain the static IPs for the VMs. And a great time-saving option when you are migrating from ESXi is the ability to remove the VMware tools on the target VM and install the Nutanix guest tools as well. Once we set our credentials for the source VMs, we can click on Next. On the VM settings screen, we can leave the defaults here. You can select the time zone, choose to retain the MAC address, or skip CD-ROM edition on the target. Since we chose Prism Central, Nutanix's multi-customer management tool, as our target, we can apply Prism Central categories to all the VMs in the plan, or we can create mappings from VMware tags or categories to Prism Central categories. Prism Central uses categories for many functions, including security policies, and those will be applied when the VMs are online on the Nutanix cluster. The last option you can select is data seeding. If you select that, the data migration will start at the chosen time when you begin the migration plan. You can click Next to move on to the summary screen. From the migration plan summary screen, you can choose back if you want to change something, save your migration plan if you want to start it later, or save and start, which is what we're going to do. On the Move dashboard, we can see that the migration plan is in progress, and it will say in progress as long as there are VMs that have not been migrated to the target. With some demo magic, if we hover over In Progress, we can see that some VMs are ready for cutover. We will click on In Progress to go to the Migration Plan Details page. From here, we can see the estimated cutover time and your options for the VM, such as creating a test VM. Back on the VM settings screens, we left the default setting on Configure Target VM. This lets you change the target VM settings by clicking the VM configuration underneath the VM's names. We're going to adjust the memory and CPU as this VM was over-provisioned on the source environment, but you can also change the VM name, power status, and number of cores. With the changes made, we're going to click Close to continue. We're going to skip creating a test VM and choose Cutover. If you have multiple VMs, you can select whichever VMs you want to cut over. Once we select Cutover, we're going to get a warning screen telling us that the source VM will be powered off, the virtual NIC will be disconnected, and a note left to show that it has been migrated. Select Continue to proceed. You will know the migration is complete when the View Target VM options show up under Details. We're going to click on View Target VM to take us to the Nutanix cluster. There we can check if the VM is online. Once you log into Prism and navigate to the VM section, you can open a console and you'll see that your VM is online as we have done here. If we bring up our source vCenter, we can see that the VM is powered off. A note was added to note that the VM has been migrated. And if we open the details, we can see that the virtual NIC has been disconnected. 
With the NIC disconnected, if someone mistakenly powers this VM on, it will not interfere with the already migrated VM. Back on the Move dashboard, the migration plan shows complete, since all VMs in the plan have been migrated. That was a quick look at how easy it is to migrate to the new Tenet's cloud platform. And that just scratches the surface of what Move can do. You can learn more about Move by signing up for a Move test drive or following the link above.